Namor is a complex character known as a sometimes villain, sometimes hero, but more often anti hero, and is credited as being the first mutant of Marvel Comics and also one of its first superheroes ever. Hero. But what else could Namor become through the endless possibilities of the multiverse? Welcome back, Nerd Squad. Join me and find out as we surf through the oceans of the multiverse and count down the top 10 alternate versions of Namor. Let's get into it. I feel like people will be able to tell I've never surfed before because I don't know if this is what you do. This is just what I see people do in movies. They like lean back. Maybe I should try to go surfing sometime so I can do that more accurately. Number 10, Sea Lord. I mostly like this version of Namor just because I like his medieval and kind of Greco Roman, really, garb here. Sea Lord is the medieval version of Namor who was created when Morgan Le Fay warped reality, putting all heroes in a medieval like setting and imprisoning Scarlet Witch, who was one of the few who remained conscious that this reality was not actually the true reality. Eventually, Wanda, utilizing Wonder Man, would free everyone from Morgan Le Fay's altered reality and also defeat the evil sorceress. But until that happened, Sea Lord, aka Namor, like the other heroes, would believe that he was a member of the Queen's Vengeance. Everyone who had been fighting previous to the reality warp against Morgan Le Fay, now stylized as the Queen in this reality, sought to protect her as part of her elite guard, the Queen's Vengeance. Namor included. Ultimate Namor. This version of Namor is not actually the ruler of Atlantis, but is considered a false king. In the Ultimate Universe of 1610, Namor is an ancient Atlantean criminal who was imprisoned and kept asleep for 9,000 years. Kind of like a mummy, but without all the being dead and looking gross parts that come with that monster type. Namor initially proved to be too powerful for the Fantastic Four to handle, and at one point threatened Manhattan with a giant tidal wave unless Sue gave him a kiss, which she did, and keeping his promise, he ceased his attack and returned to the ocean. I like that he was just like, I just want to kiss and then I'm out, so it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. I'm easy to appease even though I could just literally wipe the floor with all of you. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you love Namor as much as I love Namor, please be sure to show your love by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8, Conqueror Namor. This Namor doesn't really have any fancy names, so I kind of just decided to give him one. So just so you know, this isn't like an official term or an editorial term. This is an Amanda term. He shows up in Volume 1 of Exiles, Issue 15, and hails from the alternate Earth of 1016. He ends up being defeated and likely killed by the Mimic of Earth 12, who is a member of the Exiles team. Namor here is obsessed with conquering and appears to have become King of Latveria as well as Atlantis. His goal is to win all wars against any who oppose him, continuing years and years of war. But why? Well, because he knows that in fighting against the Latverians or any who still oppose him, it will only bring Atlantis more glory. Mimic attempts to talk sense into Namor as he has found a friend in the version of Namor from Earth 12, his own reality. Unfortunately, Conqueror Namor only cares about just that, conquering and greater and greater wars and victories for Atlantis. And he will hear none of it. And so Mimic is forced to destroy him. Although the Namor of Earth 1016 does put up a really good fight at least. Number 7, Hippie Namor. This version of Namor hails from Earth 71853 and made his first appearance in 2018's Exiles in Issue 3. When the Exiles arrived in Hippie Namor's home reality, he sensed that they really needed to chill. He offered them whatever their heart desired to help them calm down, as they seemed to be wound up a little too tight. However, the reason for their mood was soon revealed after the Time Eater arrived and devoured Hippie Namor and his reality, destroying it temporarily. I say temporarily because once the exiles were able to defeat the Time Eater, the reality of 71853 and its version of Namor were restored. Yay! Hippie Namor lives. Number 6, Emperor Numenor. Emperor Numenor hails from the reality of Earth 311, that of the 1602 universe. Here, Namor is not a ruler of Atlantis, but a ruler of what is referred to as Ben Asylum, the city of the gods. It's basically just Atlantis as it's still, you know, deep below the ocean in a trench, but it just sounds cooler in the 1602 universe. A city of the gods, you know what I mean? Here, Namor ruled Ben Asylum with his cousin Rita, who he hoped would marry someone soon. He himself became an enamored with Susan Storm of the Four from the Fantastic. Unfortunately, he would be unsuccessful in winning her as his bride as Count Otto Von Doom betrayed him in their scheme, double-crossing and killing Namor. 
Number 5. King Namor King Namor hails from the reality of Earth 6706 and here is married to Susan Storm and together they have a son named Gambit, another son named Johnny, and two daughters Aaron and Ari. Gambit is like kind of a blonde Namor in terms of his armor and his aquatic abilities, though he also possesses his mother's ability to create shields, though he does so telekinetically. But Gambit here walks and talks like the Remy of Earth 616, which is kind of weird but I'm pretty into it. Namor here gives me a kind of of ancient Egyptian vibe when it comes to his dress and his darker skin. I just really love this alternate Namor and I think he and his family are super cool. I'm also just a fan of any reality where Sue and Namor end up together as yeah I kind of ship them. Like I'm not anti, well I kind of am sometimes anti Reed and Sue but uh, I'm not anti Reed and Sue right now but I just think Namor and Sue's a good couple. You can find King Namor and his family in the new Exile series from 2008. He makes his first appearance in issue number one. Number four. Aquamariner. Aquamariner is the amalgam version of Namor. He's a combination of both Marvel's Namor, the Submariner, and DC's Aquaman. I mean, of course, these two would be combined together. It just makes so much sense as a combo. He first appears in JLX issue number one out of Amalgam Comics. Being a combination of both heroes, he has both of their abilities. In this reality, Namor was once king of Atlantis, but was forced to come to the surface after the destruction of the city Poseidonus in order to protect the oceans from further harm. Arthur McKenzie was one of the founding members of the All Star Winners Squadron and would go on to join up with the Justice League X Men, aka the JLX. Number 3. Prime Minister Namor Although he is only mentioned in issue 15 of the 2001 Exile series, this version of Namor sounds pretty impressive, which is why I included him. And I personally love the idea of him as a character. I hope we actually get to meet him at some point. He is the friend of Mimic who hails from Earth 12. On Earth 12, Namor is the Prime Minister and ruler of Atlantis. He has brought about peace between the surface world and the underwater civilizations. On Earth 12, mutants are accepted and even celebrated being treated as celebrities, as are superheroes in this reality. Although we never meet him, we do know that Mimic feels really guilty after being forced to kill an alternate version of Namor because of Prime Minister Namor's existence in Mimic's home reality. Number 2. Mr. Nimbus Ugh. Gosh, I really love this alternate version. People kept telling me after this episode came out that I really needed to watch this this new first episode of Rick and Morty, and boy were they right. I love when two fandoms that I love parody one another or intersect in some way. It's just so cool. And this is definitely a case of that. Mr. Nimbus is Rick Sanchez of Rick and Morty's arch nemesis, and he was definitely created to be a parody of Marvel's anti-hero Namor. Namor himself is underwater royalty and is also known for being a very sexy and stubborn Atlantean, which is exactly the model for Mr. Nimbus's personality who immediately offers the three way to Jerry and Beth upon meeting him and is very fickle when it comes to signing a peace treaty with Rick after he landed in his domain, aka the ocean. I also love that Mr. Nimbus has a horn that grants him extra power. While this doesn't allow him to control sea monsters like Namor's Horn of Proteus, it does grant him even greater strength than he had before. And it's definitely a reference to the Horn of Proteus, in my opinion. Number 1. Captain Namor Captain Namor is the Noirverse version of Namor's character. In the reality of Earth 90214, Namor works for Tony Stark, venturing out to complete sea voyages for him on his ship, Dorma. Dorma for his ship is obviously a name that is a play on that of Namor's lover, Lady Dorma, from the 616 reality. It makes sense as a captain that his ship would have the name of a woman he loves in the main continuity, as most captains do love their ships well. The Dorma is a unique ship in that it appears as a fishing boat, but it, that's actually just a disguise. Dorma is really a submarine, which is pretty crazy for the Noirverse considering the time period. Or well actually, did we have submarines back in uh, the 30s? Probably. Probably we did, but not secret sneaky ones. Namor the Submariner captaining a submarine. I see what you did there. Who is your favorite Namor alternate? What kind of alternate versions of Namor would you like to see in the future? Are you an Exiles fan? Let us know in the comments below. And speaking of comments, it is time to turn to some comments from one of our latest videos, Top 10 Most Powerful Black Superheroes Part 2. Just a peaceful man who's born in the 1980s responds, Miles Morales, one of my top 7 characters with spider-like abilities who aren't Peter Parker. Yeah, Miles Morales is also one of my top spider alternates, although I definitely think Miles is kind of on the same level as Peter now? Like they're both Spider-Man. 
Carl Walton Stanley comments, let's get a third. There are several other characters that need mentioning. Also, do you have a recent top 10 superhero teams? I feel like we have done some superhero team up lists, not recently, but I'm gonna ask my lovely, lovely editor to include maybe some links or some things that I can point to that you could click. I don't know if that's a thing, but if that's a thing, it's happening right now. And as for a part three, I agree with you. There are so many characters I still wanna talk about, so many black superheroes that have not been mentioned that need to be mentioned, so yes. Part three. Lavelle M writes, Amanda is invited to the black BBQ. Oh my goodness, I love barbecues. You just let me know the time and place and I will be there. And that is all the time we have for comments today. Be sure to comment below for a chance to have your thoughts and feels shouted out in a future video. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I am your host Amanda McKnight reminding you as always to stay nerdy YouTube.